from the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. I wear my mask, I wash my hands. I've done everything right. And I came down with it anyway. A couple under quarantine, despite saying they took the proper precautions, we show you what they are dealing with. We have seen our numbers top each other uh, week after week for about the last three weeks. Hospitalizations have tripled at one Bartholomew County Hospital. The healthcare workers plea to the public tonight. At least two COVID-19 vaccines could soon be approved in the United States, but there are still concerns about the safety of these vaccines. We speak to the expert about their issue, their advice for you. One of the largest school systems in central Indiana, Hamilton Southeastern, is going back to all virtual learning because of the COVID surge. The concerns from parents and even the mayor of Fishers. And first at six breaking news, Governor Eric Holcomb and First Lady Janet Holcomb are quarantining after several members of the governor's security detail tested positive for COVID-19. That is according to a release from the state governor and the first the governor and the first lady will be tested for the coronavirus at some point this week since they are considered close contacts of the security detail. Good evening, I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. A record number of additional COVID-19 deaths on a single report here in Indiana. Data from the Indiana Department of Health shows 84 additional coronavirus deaths. Again, that is a record number of deaths on a single report. In total, 4,770 Hoosiers have died with COVID-19 since the pandemic began. Since March, more than 1,969,000 people in Indiana have been tested for the coronavirus. 13.3% of them have tested positive for it. An Indianapolis couple says they did everything right and still they've been diagnosed with COVID-19. The wife is also battling cancer, kidney failure and heart issues. The husband is an essential worker. Both are now quarantined together at home. They open up about their experience. WRTV's Troy Washington shares their story. Symptoms started with a just a horrible smashing headache that was so bad I couldn't sleep. That was November 8th. I went to the ER and that's um, when I found out that I was positive for COVID-19. For more than a week now, Marsha Nessel has been in quarantine with her husband at their home. He's come down with it too. He just tested positive yesterday. For her, it's especially scary. I, my big concern was, you know, I've, I've got cancer, kidneys, heart damage. If I have COVID, I'm not going to survive this. Looking back over things, she says her family tried their best to stay safe during the pandemic. She even tried to limit trips to the office for work. We stayed home. We, you know, had food delivered. Occasionally we'd go through a drive through. She says she even followed CDC guidelines to a T. I wear my mask. I wash my hands. I've done everything right and I came down with it anyway. She claims her doctor broke it down for her pretty simple. The community spread is so bad now that it's practically uncontrolled in our state. Working for you, Troy Washington, WRTV. And hospitalizations from COVID-19 have nearly tripled in the past two weeks in Columbus. And the surge in hospitalizations at Columbus Regional come as they spike across the state too. WRTV Stephanie Wade has this story. In the spring, we weren't seeing the massive numbers of people flooding hospitals like other major cities. But yet we still prepared for kind of, you know, what, what we thought would be the tsunami coming. And now the tsunami seems to be hitting our area, certainly. In the past two weeks, hospitalizations have nearly tripled at Columbus Regional Health. Their dedicated COVID unit at capacity right now and looking for ways to expand it with more beds and resources. We need to free up beds, of course, but beds don't care for people. People care for people. But perhaps the biggest need is staffing. They're tired. They're wearing a tight N95 mask all day long for, you know, 10 plus hour shifts. Kelsey DeClue says healthcare workers are exhausted and they don't have enough staff to keep up. 
You can't see these patients struggling. You can't see these staff struggling because it's happening behind very uh, <laughs> closed doors to keep everyone everyone safe. And you know, I, I know we saw a lot of those images cir- uh, circulating in the spring of the New York hospitals and all that. I mean, we are seeing some of that. Our people are tired. The most frustrating part. They are living this realness day after day after day. And there are people outside saying, oh, it's not real, it's not a big deal, it's no worse than this or that. And that's really, really hard for our staff to hear. Um, They get increasingly frustrated when people don't take this seriously. Like many other hospitals, Columbus Regional is now prioritizing surgical procedures to maintain enough beds. DeClue is worried we're seeing these spikes in cases because people are out more, letting their guard down. Anywhere from 2 to 14 or maybe more for some people days after they're exposed, they can develop symptoms. Well, in that meantime, they could be spreading the virus without knowing it. So she's asking, begging people to mask up and take this virus seriously. We've got to do everything that we can um, to stop this, and it takes every single person to do it. Stephanie Wade, WRTV. To make more beds available, Columbus Regional Health is evaluating procedures to require an overnight stay and asking people to hold off until hospitalizations calm down. And as we learn more good news about the two uh, about the effectiveness of two COVID-19 vaccines, another vaccine trial is underway right now at IU School of Medicine. Now, the hope is that the vaccine will eventually be available to the public and protect people with COVID-19. Our Alyssa Donovan has those details. Doctors involved in the AstraZeneca vaccine trial happening at IU School of Medicine say we'll likely learn if this vaccine is effective by the end of the year. Today, the lead doctor in charge of the trial shared an update, saying that just over 200 participants had received either the placebo or the vaccine in the double-blind trial. Three participants also shared their experience so far of being part of this study. They also explained why they volunteered in the first place. Ashley Meager, a surgeon with IU Health, says she chose to join the vaccine trial after seeing COVID-19 patients suffer firsthand. The virus is surging right now. Um, We're seeing more and more positive patients in the hospital and um, anything we can do to, to Um, try and minimize that would be really great. Dr. Cynthia Brown, the lead researcher for the study, says they'll still need more people to apply and participate. They've received many applications, but not everyone is qualified. Their goal is to have between 1,000 and 1,500 Hoosiers in the trial. We have to get to uh, an overall enrollment in the United States between 30 to 40,000. Then from there, we can determine the effectiveness of the vaccine. The participants we spoke to say they have not experienced any side effects so far. I'm Alyssa Donovan, WRTV. And if you are interested in signing up for the trial, we have those details on our website at WRTV.com. We are still waiting on official word on when a vaccine will be available to prevent and eventually stop the spread of COVID-19. As we've reported, Moderna released early results from its phase three trial showing its vaccine is nearly 95% effective in preventing coronavirus. Last week, Pfizer said its vaccine is about 90% effective. Moderna and Pfizer both say they haven't found any major health concerns stemming from their vaccines. However, both companies still need to get emergency use authorization from the FDA before any doses of those vaccines can be released. Even with these developments, some people are still concerned about the safety of a COVID-19 vaccine, considering it's brand new and was developed quickly compared to other vaccines. I spoke with an expert on medical and health communication, and she gives her take on those concerns. I think what I would say to those people is that I think your concerns are valid. Um, I think a lot of people have concerns about vaccines. We in the vaccine world call that vaccine hesitancy. And I would encourage those people to go and talk to their trusted healthcare provider. We're seeing a lot of stuff in the news. We're seeing a lot of people talking about COVID and being experts on it. But at the end of the day, I hope that you have a trusted healthcare provider that you can go to. Talk to them, ask them, is this vaccine safe? Should 
I get it. Is it right for me? Again, there is no exact timeline for when the first doses of the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine will be released. Experts say it could be later this month or possibly in December. And those doses will likely go to frontline health care workers and those most vulnerable populations first. Dr. Anthony Fauci says any vaccine probably won't be available to the general population until sometime this upcoming spring, possibly April, May or June. It was another sunny day around most of Indiana, including in downtown Indianapolis. This beautiful view is from the WRTV drone. What you can't see is that it is significantly cooler today. You could definitely feel it. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory shows us what's ahead for the rest of the night and into the morning. Kevin. Yeah, we were 10 to 15 degrees cooler today, Amanda. Dry until Sunday. That's what happens when you get these sunny days. We've got no real change here over the next few days. High pressure is the reason why we're on cruise control. We're to the, uh, well, east barely. We're kind of just right under the high pressure area. So clear sky, calm wind and colder temperatures. The warmer air sits to the west side of the high. So once our wind changes direction, we'll start to tap into some of that warmth. Temperatures in the 30s at this hour, they will drop into the 20s. The wind is calming down, and this is what you'll wake up to. Temperatures mid-20s, warming to about 44 by noon. We've got a lot to talk about when the strongest winds come back and what changes arrive for the weekend. We'll do that shortly. Well, parents in the Hamilton Southeastern School District are bracing for another change. As the school board just announced, pre-K through sixth grade students will move to virtual learning later this week. WRTV's Megan Sanctorum has this story. Pre-K through sixth grade students here in the Hamilton Southeastern School District only have one more day of in-person learning until going completely virtual. District leaders say it's because they don't have the staff to keep the schools open. So there's not a lot of time to scramble to figure out things right now. Jessica Wessel is a mother of two and a parent who just learned her kids will be back home for e-learning starting Thursday. My son's in third and my daughter's in kindergarten, so it isn't like you can be away from them while they do it. You have to monitor that. But district leaders say it's a change they had to make. 94 teachers and instructional staff members requested a sub today. Their current fill rate is only about 50%. Principals and counselors are even stepping in to help, and they anticipate the need for subs to increase as the week goes on. Anything we can do, we're, we're going to try to provide our resources. In a statement, Fisher's mayor, Scott Fadness, says he was not aware of the district's decision to move pre-K through sixth grade to virtual learning. And he worries about the burden this places on families. In fact, he says he was just getting ready to announce a new priority COVID-19 testing site, specifically for teachers, students, and their families. Our school system in our local economy are very important things to our residents. And in order to keep both of those going, the availability of fast, reliable testing is really, really critical. That is scheduled to open on Monday. Parents hope it helps solve the current staffing issue so kids can get back in the classroom. So we got to figure it out here in the Fishers because education is essential and it should be the last thing to close down. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, WRTV. And grades 7 through 12 are already attending class virtually. The virtual learning for pre-K through 6th graders will begin Thursday and last until December 4th. The district partnered with the YMCA and they will be offering daycare for students from 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Well, the pandemic is causing budget shortfalls for school systems across the state. IPS alone is looking at a multi-million dollar deficit. WRTV's Rafael Sanchez reports on this budget crunch. IPS was among the last school districts in Marion County to return to in-person learning. That the superintendent believes is the reason why less kindergartners enrolled this year, causing a $15.3 million deficit. The district hopes lawmakers in the January budget session will not punish schools being forced to teach remotely because of a spike in COVID-19 cases. Previously, the governor said schools should get their full funding. I think it is highly inappropriate to incentivize school districts to make decisions based on funding and not based on the health and safety of their students. IPS has weathered previous financial storms by closing schools, selling properties, and recently signing up with a new school bus service. I can tell you there are not places where I can look and just cut millions of dollars without 
significantly impacting what happens in our school buildings every day. Um, but that does not mean there aren't places where we can look to make different decisions um, and, and get some savings back. In a tweet last week, the superintendent called out the legislature asking, I thought we were in this together. Critical that face masks would not be required among lawmakers. And I just think that is not setting um, a strong example. If we're going to be in this together, then I think it's important important for us as leaders, myself included, to model what we expect those around us to do. Um, and wearing a mask seems to be the, the least of uh, courtesies that we can extend to one another to keep us safe and healthy. Due to the high COVID numbers in Marion County, her 31,171 students will be back learning from home starting Monday. Working for you in Indianapolis, Rafael Sanchez, WRTV. A new development, Ball State University is taking an additional step to try to prevent a surge in COVID-19 cases on campus. Ahead of the spring semester, Ball State has announced it will require all students to provide a COVID-19 test result before returning to campus for the spring semester in January. The school says students are required to submit a test result within seven days before arriving on campus. And Ball State is asking students to self-quarantine between the date the test is taken and the date they return to school. Reconstruction on the North Split is about to begin. It's a major construction project. The impact it could have on your drive, plus what's changing. And a change for IU basketball season. What every fan needs to know ahead of the Ho Hoosiers home opener. Rain returns as we get to the weekend. We'll zero in on the timing. Help you out there. Coming up. Welcome back. Reconstruction on the North Split in downtown Indianapolis is coming soon after several years of debate. The Indiana Department of Transportation announced today the $320 million project to redesign and reconstruct the state's second most heavily traveled interchange will begin in the next three to four weeks. Construction will eventually close portions of Interstate 75, 65 and 70, excuse me, on the northeast side of downtown and last two years. The North Split project will replace or repair 32 bridges over more than three miles of highway, reconfigure traffic patterns, and condense the size of the interchange, according to an INDOT environmental assessment. In early December, construction will begin with the closure of the Michigan Street exit ramp from the 6570 Collector Distributor Road. INDOT expects the ramp to be closed for a year. An INDOT spokesperson also said the first phase of work will focus on entrance and exit ramps. The work on the actual interstate and bigger closures won't start until the spring of 2021. The entire project is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2022. As a Hoosier, I'm sure you're aware we've had tornadoes every month of the year. And on this date, seven years ago, we had the second largest tornado outbreak in Indiana history with 30 tornadoes in a single day. Typically, we think of the springtime, but I just want to point out if you look at the top 10 tornado outbreaks, three of them are in the month of November. You go back to 1992, we had 15 tornadoes in one outbreak, and then in 2010, 13 tornadoes. Well, no rain, no storms. As we go through the rest of the work week, we'll have some rain, it looks like, Sunday into Sunday night along a cold front. Temperatures are mild starting Thursday, lasting through Sunday. The rain that we have on Sunday will mark the transition to cooler temperatures, should be fairly widespread. Snow with that will be up in lower Michigan, but rain through the Hoosier State all the way to the southwest, followed by the cooler temperatures. Looks like it could be a soaking rain once again. Now the forecast model I'll show you here is a little more on the aggressive side, but has anywhere from three quarters of an inch to over an inch in spots by the time we get to the morning hours on Monday. This is just through 11 o'clock on Sunday night. Skies are clear right now and temperatures are falling down to 34 in Greenfield and Richmond. Temperatures 44 in Sullivan. The air's dry. The wind is calming down. That will allow the coldest temperatures to settle at ground level. Should be mid 20s in the morning. Couple spots might be a little colder than that. 
Here we go again. Sunshine will carry us back into the upper 40s to lower 50s. The wind again strong, but out of the south this time, gusting over 20 miles per hour. Temperatures are coolest north and northeast of Indianapolis. We'll all feel the strongest winds Thursday. There come the wind gusts again, reaching 40 miles per hour, potentially a little stronger at times Thursday as temperatures are drawn back into the 60s. Friday, Saturday still in the 60s. The chance for rain Saturday, just 20%. The best chance on Sunday, which I talked about. Cooler, Monday at 50 degrees. We'll be at 46 for the high next Tuesday. So temperatures up and down. What do you expect for this time of the year? Up the next few days and then down for the weekend, late weekend. <laughs> and a dance move to boot. All right, thanks, Kevin. Tonight we are learning that, at least for now, there will be no fans allowed at IU men's and women's basketball games. In a release, Indiana University says this decision is in response to the ongoing pandemic and mirrors the strategy the Big Ten is using for its football games this fall. The school says it will work with local and state health officials to determine if and when fans can return to watch games live. A variety of jobs are now opening up. We are showing you some of them in the Hiring Hoosiers job feed. Carvana is hiring nearly 100 people in the Indianapolis area. The company needs automotive technicians and auto body and paint professionals for the Carvana Inspection Center in Greenfield. The company continues its hiring event to fill these positions Wednesday and Thursday. And it's happening at the Carvana Inspection Center. Again, that's in Greenfield. To learn more and register, go to carvana.com slash careers. Hiring Hoosiers partner Spherion needs two HR generalists for a client in Indianapolis. Pay is around $20 an hour. And learn more about these open positions by going to the Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page. And don't forget about the job board at hiringhoosiers.com. There are many other job openings there as well. We'll be right back. After tomorrow, temperatures will be consistently about 10 degrees above average. That puts us in the low 60s as we go Thursday into the weekend, dry until Sunday. Mark and Amanda. Kevin, thank you. That's going to do it for us here on WRTV News at 6. See you at 7.